Hi, everybody. Hope you're all having a good day today so far. Today, we're going to talk about global maximization and concave functions. Now, you'll recall that last time we developed both necessary conditions and sufficient conditions for a point, I've labeled X bar here, for a point to be a local maximum of a function. But today, we're going to be talking about global maximization. And uh, I think we can start right off here with a sort of obvious remark. And that is that if we have a point that is a global maximum that provides a maximum of the function f uh, over its whole domain, then obviously it's also a local maximum too. And so that's a kind of a triviality that's obvious. But what follows from that is uh, kind of obvious too, but it's still worth pointing out. And that is the, the A part here, which says if we have a condition or conditions that are sufficient to guarantee we have a global maximum, then of course that condition or those conditions will guarantee we have a local maximum as well because the global maximum is a local maximum. And uh, at the same time, the B part here of this, of this uh, remark says that if we have a necessary condition satisfied for a point to be a local maximum, then uh, that condition, I should say that a little differently, if we have a necessary condition that has to be satisfied when a point is a local maximum point, then that necessary condition is going to have to be satisfied if we have a global maximum. And so that's actually kind of important, as obvious as it is, uh, because when we're modeling or analyzing an economic decision maker, and we model the decision maker as maximizing or minimizing some uh, objective function, well, we don't really think that the person or firm or uh, government, uh, we don't really think that the decision maker is simply trying to maximize locally. We feel that the, the and we're really assuming that the decision maker is choosing uh, an action or a combination of activities that maximize over all the possible uh, available alternatives, global maximization. So last time when we were working with local maximization, you might think, well, this isn't really important because we're really interested in global maximization. Indeed, that's the case, but it doesn't mean that what we did with local maximization is not important, of course, because you can see in B here that if we have a global maximum, then whatever necessary conditions we obtained for being a local maximum are going to have to help hold for a global maximum as well. So the necessary conditions we obtained last time, of course, for a global maximum were a first order condition that said that the derivative or the gradient at the point where the candidate for being a maximum point has to be zero or the zero vector if it's a gradient if we're in larger dimensional space than just one dimension. And second, a second derivative condition that said that the uh, Hessian matrix of second partial derivatives has got to be uh, negative semi-definite if we're at a maximum point. And so those conditions then have to hold for a global maximum. So if we assume that the decision maker is, is globally maximizing, is choosing something that's a maximizer over all the things that are possible, then uh, those necessary conditions will hold. And in fact, let's even uh, go back to our, remember, we, we have our kind of uh, bunny slope um, simple examples, and uh, maybe our simplest, our Econ 101 kind of example was profit maximization. And so let's go back and look at the profit maximization example uh, in light of uh, what we've said here. So let's suppose that uh, we want to say that X bar uh, is a max, a maximum of the profit function. And the profit function, let's say, is of course defined to be uh, revenue minus cost. That's how we define profit always. Um, 
And I'm just treating X here as a real variable. So think of just one, one uh, activity or one product here for X, but uh, we're going to see that in fact everything we say can generalize to multiple products or activities. So if pi bar is a maximum, uh, and let's say it's a global maximum because that's what we're really assuming is that the, a firm is maximizing over all possible uh, choices. Well, that implies that X bar is a local maximum. Again, this kind of trivial remark over here is a local maximum of the function, and that implies the necessary conditions for being a local maximum. And, of course, the first order necessary condition was that uh, pi prime at x, let's say x bar, uh, is zero. And, of course, that's the same as saying that uh, marginal revenue, that the derivative of the revenue function minus the derivative of the cost function, because the profit function is the difference, the derivative of the revenue function minus the derivative of the cost function is zero, which says the marginal revenue equals marginal cost. And, uh, of course, we have a second order condition that has to be satisfied. And, of course, in the case of a one-dimensional uh, domain, uh, the Hessian matrix reduces to just the second derivative of the function. So that would say that pi double prime of, of x at x bar has got to be less than or equal to zero. And so what is that telling me? That's telling me that uh, and let's go back up here. Actually, let's, let's make this, just for the moment, let's write this as this is equal to zero uh, because I want to emphasize that the derivative of the profit function is this difference. And so the second derivative of pi is the derivative of this expression. So it's the derivative of marginal revenue, the slope or rate of change in marginal revenue, minus the derivative or the slope or the rate of change of marginal cost. So what this says is that marginal revenue, if it's decreasing, as it typically would be, uh, if marginal revenue is decreasing, it is uh, decreasing uh, faster than marginal cost. MR prime of X minus MC prime of X is less than or equal to zero. So uh, that, of course, would say that uh, if we draw our kind of econ 101 diagram here, where this is X, and let's say this is marginal revenue X, and so let's draw a marginal cost curve in here that looks like this. And so this condition, the second derivative condition, condition on the derivatives of the marginal revenue and the marginal cost, say that this would be a, uh, a maximum point. So let's call that X bar. Would be a maximizer uh, of the profit function. And... Uh, because here we have marginal revenue equal marginal cost, and the marginal revenue is declining faster than marginal cost. And here we have, let's say, an X tilde, which is not a maximizer. Even though marginal revenue equals marginal cost, the marginal revenue is not decreasing faster than marginal cost, but the reverse. So in fact, you could work out that this would be a minimum profit point rather than a maximum profit point. Uh, so this is just this is just elementary econ 101 kind of diagram and ideas. Uh, let's note that everything we're saying here about the one variable case would be true, of course, if we had multiple products, multiple activities. We just have to change this to the gradient 
of the profit function would be the zero vector. And here we'd have to say that the Hessian matrix of second partial derivatives is negative semi-definite. And then work out the implications of those conditions uh, for the, uh, the behavior of the firm. For example, when conditions change, uh, what are the comparative statics? How does the, how does the optimal uh, how does the optimal vector of activities respond, and so on. So this is kind of, again, sort of, as we've said before, this is kind of bunny slope, simple example, but as you <laughs> realize by now, uh, I'm a big fan of trying to understand the things we're doing first with the simplest, most transparent and familiar kinds of examples, and so that's why I wanted to spend a few minutes on this, uh, even though I think we've, uh, we've talked about this a little previously in the course, in fact. Uh, but here I want to emphasize that what's going on is that uh, we're just using here the necessary first and second order conditions for a local maximum. And we're using those even though we're assuming that the firm is choosing something that's a global maximum. And of course, the reason is the B part of this remark. Because if we have something that's a global maximum, it's got to be a local maximum. And now we have a theorem that uh, is, in a certain sense, even stronger. It really gives us a, a little more power. And that is, when we have a concave function, here we didn't assume that the profit function was necessarily concave, but if we have a concave function, then this theorem says that local maximum, global maximum, they're the same thing. If we have a local maximum, it's a global maximum and vice versa. So of course, in one direction, that if it's a global maximum, then it'll be a local maximum that we already have, and that's trivial. So what we're really interested in is showing that if we have a point that's a local maximum, Indeed, it has to be a global maximum as well if the function's concave. So what this means then is that when we're working with concave functions, we don't have to make the distinction between local and global maximization. They're the same thing. It doesn't really matter whether it's we're talking about local or global. Uh, maximization is maximization. So we can drop the global or local adjectives and just talk about being a maximum or being a minimum point. So this theorem, uh, we clearly only need to prove that what's down in parentheses here. We need to prove it only in this one direction. And so let's take off what we have here and we'll, uh, we'll put a proof of this theorem over on this side of the screen. So let's just pause for a few moments and we'll take this off. Okay, we've got some space back over here now and uh, we'll use this space to uh, do a proof uh, of what we have in parentheses down here in this theorem. Uh, this is pretty elementary. I could assign this as an exercise, but I think it would be useful to, for us to do this as a proof here to kind of give you a start in doing proofs of this kind uh, with concave functions uh, and maximization. And so uh, let's, uh, let's start in on, on the proof. So, we want to prove that if we have a point that's a local maximum, it's got to be a global max. So what we're going to do is prove this by contradiction. We're going to say, suppose x bar is not a global maximum uh, of f, and we'll show that it can't be a local max, and that'll be the uh, that'll be the proof. So, the fact that we have x bar is not a global max means that there exists some x hat, and here we've said. Uh, in the statement of the theorem that f, the domain of f is capital X. And of course, if f is a concave function, then its domain has to be a convex set. That's part of the definition of being a concave or a convex function. So capital X is a convex set here, convex set, and 
we'll say in, uh, in RL. So uh, the x hat that gives a larger value of f has to be a point in the domain, in x. And so uh, we have this. So now let's say for each lambda in the interval 0, 1, let's let x of lambda, as we often have done, be 1 minus lambda x bar plus lambda x. Then since uh, the function's concave, we know that f uh, at x of lambda is uh, greater than or equal to um, 1 minus lambda f of x bar plus lambda f of x. And that is f of x bar plus lambda times f of x minus f of x bar. And of course, f of x minus f of x bar, uh, I just call that x hat here, so let's put a hat on these. I probably should have just done it without the hat, but <laughs> given that I've done that, I better put the hats on there. Um, so, uh, of course, this quantity in the square brackets, f of x hat minus f of x bar, is positive. And, of course, lambda is positive. So that says f of x of lambda is greater than f of x bar, strictly greater. And uh, that really finishes the proof because now let me draw a little picture of what's going on, and then we'll write the, maybe the last sentence of the proof. So what's going on here is that we have, let's say, x bar here, and let's say we have uh, x hat over here. There, that's supposed to be the line, the line segment joining the two points. Uh, and we have, uh, let's say, everything in here is an x of lambda. Because when lambda is 0, we're at x bar, and when lambda is 1, we're here. And so let's even put that on here. We're, and when lambda is 0, we're down here, and when lambda is 1, we're up here, and everything in between, we're on the line segment. And so it is also the case, we've now shown, that everything on the line segment, we have f of x of lambda greater than f of x hat, and in particular, then, any, any neighborhood of x bar, no matter how small, is going to contain points on the line segment at which uh, the value of f is strictly bigger than at, mistake here, <laughs> that should be x bar, not x hat, that's for sure, <laughs> that should be x bar. So everything on the line segment, the value of f is bigger than it is at x bar. That's what we've got here. And in particular, for any neighborhood, there are going to be points on the line segment in that neighborhood where the value of f is bigger th than it is at x bar. And therefore, x bar is not, cannot be, a local maximizer of f. So let's just say here, therefore, uh, just writing out what we did in the geometry, and I said verbally, every neighborhood of x bar contains points x lambda such that f of such that f of x of lambda is bigger than f of x.
bar. And that completes the proofs, verifying that X bar is not a local maximum. So, of course, this is a proof by contradiction. So what we really have is that if X bar is a local maximum, then it's got to be a global maximum as well. That's just what we have in parentheses down here. So that completes the proof, an elementary, pretty simple proof of our first theorem here about concave functions and the relation of concave functions to optimization. And what we're going to do the rest of the lecture here is to uh, go a little further along the same lines and start even looking at um, differentiable concave functions, characterizing them, and see what that will tell us about optimization.